Hello, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here at the NLP Summit 2022. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about pharmacovigilance, um, which is um, uh, a specific process within um, uh, the life science space uh, that we work exclusively in, in Insife. Uh, Insife is a, um, uh, by the name, is uh, short for Innovation and uh, Solutions in Life Sciences. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, pharmacovigilance exclusively and how NLP has helped us um, deliver uh, more efficiency for our clients. Um, first of all, an apology. I got stuck in the airport and uh, in Holland, so you, hopefully you can see the tulips in the background uh, and the audio should hopefully still be okay. So uh, just briefly about the uh, presentation today, um, we're going to be talking about side effects uh, and efficiencies. Um, with the uh, specific angle of uh, COVID-19 has has increased the uh, the volumes of cases. There's also been other increases in the past, but really this has uh, been driving a, an increasing use of a technology like NLP. That's what we want to um, talk about uh, for the next 20 minutes. Briefly about myself, uh, my name is Martin Holm Peterson. I am CEO at Insife. I have uh, 18 years of experience in the pharmacovigilance uh, technology uh, area. Uh, I'm based in Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, I also wanted to introduce my co speaker, Amit. Hi, everyone. A very good afternoon. Uh, so, I'm Amit Arora, working as a data scientist with Insife and having three years of work experience in a data science field after doing my master's in data science and analytics. Thank you. Thanks, Ahmed. So let's dive into it. Um, before uh, trying to talk too much about the NLP piece and, uh, and what we do, I just wanted to introduce our field um, of pharmacovigilance or drug safety, as it's also called. Um, the drug safety process is really anchored around a, um, a case processing um, in the middle, um, where you have a patient that experiences an adverse event, um, a side effect, um, that side effect needs to get processed. So sometimes it gets sent in to the authorities and then sent on to um, the individual companies that have produced the drug. And sometimes it gets sent over to the um, manufacturer directly. Um, from there on, there's a series of processing uh, uh, elements that has to happen. We call it intake, case processing, and case reporting, where it typically gets sent out to the authorities again, um, and uh, typically not to the same authority that has sent it in the first place, but could be to other authorities on a global scale. Um, besides that, we also have um, quality compliance and performance oversight uh, uh, processes where we uh, make sure that uh, all the cases are handled according to the standards and timelines that we want. We also have some aggregate reporting, meaning um, running data sets in, in uh, let's say, over time, uh, including signal detection, where we try to detect if uh, a drug is still safe on the market uh, based on the uh, data that we've collected. It uh, could also be in comparison to uh, other data sets um, uh, that are out there. And finally, uh, benefit risk management, which really takes care of um, making sure that uh, you constantly assess whether the benefits outweigh the risks of the individual medicines. So that's really the field that we work in. And uh, we're gonna be talking specifically about the uh, case processing um, part today and how we can uh, use NLP to predict um, some of the uh, data points and then ease the, the case processing uh, parts. Um, so in short, uh, it's a must win battle uh, for pharma companies to um, do drug safety in a fish, in a efficient way. Um, so the side effects, we already talked a little bit about that. Um, the, there's some elements to it. There's speed. Uh, can you do it fast enough to meet regulatory expectations? Can you be accurate enough in what you do? Um, otherwise, you might get findings from authorities when they inspect you. And can you handle the large volumes uh, that may not come in a, in a, let's say, uh, even stream, but sometimes you get um, uh, more aggressive um, piles of data in, can you actually handle those? On the uh, risk management side, benefit risk management side, it's more around, uh, can you handle the large data sets? Uh, can you do, do the deep analysis? Um, as mentioned, we'll be focusing on the side effect reporting um, in this uh, presentation today. Um, and maybe next time we'll uh, talk about NLP in the, in the benefit risk section, but that's uh, a complete different story. Um, let's just uh, dive into um, where we are with the trends today. Um, this is just a piece of, uh, of data that uh, we got from uh, the FDA and the US. Uh, you can see the case uh, volumes are increasing 
uh, by somewhere between 13 to 17 percent year on year. Um, we have a, a fairly large volume of, uh, of cases that um, get in from industry and from uh, uh, other sources. Um, I, th I think these numbers are uh, actually a number short. There's about 16 million reports uh, in a year to the uh, US FDA. And you can see here in 2021, we had a little bit of a jump upwards, um, largely um, uh, because of the, the, the COVID uh, reports on, on, the, um, uh, on the vaccines. You also have uh, previous jumps that are quite significant, and that's the impact of uh, regulation, reg regulatory changes, um, which mandates more reporting, for instance, from patient support programs or market research and so forth. So um, really, this is a, um, a very steep increase. And um, uh, pharma companies are typically not able to, um, let's say, multiply their uh, processing uh, staff uh, by a factor of eight to uh, um, handle uh, the, the eightfold increase in, in cases. So they need to find other ways to do that. Um, and uh, in order to uh, uh, go that way, we try to summarize um, uh, the, the um, uh, in overview, what it is that we um, we think is necessary. I'm going to hand over to um, Amit to talk us through the next piece, and also how NLP is exactly fitting into this process. Uh, Amit, thank you so much, Martin. So hello everyone once again. So I'm going to take it forward, and we'll explain how AI and ML are going to revolutionize the pharma vigilance domain. So basically, I'll uh, like to start with the a small point, what is pharmacovigilance? So as we all know that before releasing the drugs into the market, there are certain amount of trials being crafted out over a period of time. So during those trials, there is one more important piece, which is always keep in mind, is that the patient safety and the viability of the drugs. So overall, life science continuously and constantly monitors and examine the drugs once it will be consumed by the patient and this complete process known as the pharmacovigilance. So I will further explain how AI help in pharma and the drug safety domain. So as we have seen over the years that the cases are rising in a regular basis. So to deal with this particular cases, professional have to spend the most of the important time to process those cases manually. And these cases normally are in the form of unstructured data, which can be in the form of documents, emails, PDF or words as well. And to deal with particular kind of data, we need to spend our spacious time into some manual work, which we think is not a good way to move forward. And hence, we bring AI into that particular to play its most important part. And uh, to uh, make it forward, we know that NLP is the most important piece of AI field, which normally deals with the text. And when the text is unstructured, then it can help to bring it to the structured and the meaningful format. NLP can help our professional not spend the most important time doing some manual work. Instead, they can perform their important work and let the, take, uh, let the AI take over the manual work, which can be done in a super quick time. And that can be cost effective and can help managing increasing PV workload as well. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah, thank you. So now I will talk about how we can use AI for the processing of the ADRs. So the most important criteria in our case is to extract the most important piece of information from the unstructured free text. So NLP is the best technique with which we can extract and perform that particular operation. And after that, we have our important features of using NLP are, it can perform the language translation, it can assess the casualty or the seriousness of the cases. It can perform the quality control of the manually processed information. And besides that, there is another most important feature of the NLP is that de-identification. So what is the de-identification is, is to hide the most important features or the information in the free text about the patient. For example, you can hide the names, you can hide the addresses or etc. just to not share important information with everyone. Okay, so let's move towards the different approaches on the NLP. So we consider three different generation. In the first generation, 
we include the extraction of the entities automatically and provide end results to the users. But where can be the high risk of the prediction issues? And therefore, we need to put more effort on reviewing. And that is why we move towards the second generation, where we introduce a common word, which is known as a confidence. So if a model is going to extract any entities, it will give, it, give us the confidence with which it has extracted that particular entity. So if the confidence is basically high, then we can auto accept that particular entity. Otherwise, it can go for the manual review for the user. After that, we move toward the third generation. In the third generation, what normally happens is that if the confidence value of that particular extracted field is really low, then it can get auto rejected. So it uh, will be manual work, which is really less for the users. Yeah, so we would like to talk about how John Snow model helped us during the complete process. So overall doing all this, John Snow lab have us in various ways. We are using John Snow models from last 10 to 12 months. And over a period of time, we have seen a great amount of accuracy in terms of processing our cases and the extraction of the entities and the different assertion models as well. So for example, I would like to take uh, we are using different sort of models from John Snow, such as named entity recognition model, which is the most important part in our process, mainly to extract different drugs, different problems, reactions or adverse events from the text and convert them into the structured format. So once we extract these particular entities, the next is to find the relation between the drugs and the reaction caused by that particular drug. And to complete this process, we use relation entity model. So what it does, it, it helps us in bringing which particular drugs cause that particular reaction. So it is a really powerful model and really help in our process. Apart from that, we are using models such as assertion model, merging model, and the resolution model. So if we talk about the assertion model here, it can assert the values, whether that particular drugs or the reaction are talking about the past, or the absent or the present. Can we have the next slide, please? So particularly in this dashboard, we can have a look at the extracted entities and the confidence values. Based on that, they have been auto-accepted and the auto-rejected. So to put a little bit more detail um, to how we use Spark and LP, uh, we also uh, have uh, spent quite a lot of time on uh, the visualization for the user, knowing that um, predicting data is uh, of course key, but you also need to be able to, um, uh, as a user, uh, especially where there's doubt uh, about uh, the, the confidence, to be able to um, review your, uh, your outcomes, your predictions, and then either accept or reject the um, the outcome of, of the prediction. So on the screen, you can see here um, the, the visualization, which um, clearly indicates in this case that there is a uh, text with, um, in the bottom, you can see the problem is a stroke, which was then uh, put into the augmented value for exception. Um, if you uh, click the green button, you will accept the uh, the data point, which will then go into your case. Uh, you could also choose B to change the change the value and put something else in. Um, and thirdly, you can choose to reject it. Um, these data points are, um, are well. Your choices are essentially stored, and then you can also use that for a retraining of the model later on. Um, hence, the uh, the user behavior becomes a an attribute uh, to help us do better predictions in the future. So, what are the benefits in um, in summary? Uh, of course, there's uh, an element of scalability. Uh, if uh, human processors are uh, doing cases manually, um, it, it's kind of like a one-to-one -one with how many people you have processing. Here, you can run with a much larger scale, um, so you can deal with many, uh, many uh, times uh, more cases in a single day. 
um, in, the, in the same way the cases get processed faster. Sometimes the case processing speed is essential, um, not because you have to send them out before, let's say on 15 days, but then you have more time to do qualitative um, um, uh, elements of, of the case processing, could be uh, med uh, medical review or other things, uh, or pulling them out into aggregate reporting. Um, so from unstructured to structured data, the, um, as just shown before, the, the, uh, the prediction is also visualized, uh, making it easy for the users to see the output and uh, decide if it's good enough, especially in the cases where uh, the confidence is medium um, and maybe not high enough for complete automation and not low enough for uh, it to uh, fail automatically. So it is a decision-making facilitator. Um, the, the clinical decision making, um, the post market products as well, uh, will uh, be eased by adding uh, the NLP in this way. So, with that, um, Ahmed and I would like to um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, with you today. I uh, hope you have a great rest of the day um, uh, with that. And uh, yeah, Ahmed, do you want to say anything finally? Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for giving us this opportunity to speak in the NLP. Met, and it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much.